Welcome everyone to the program. It's just about seven days to Nigeria's 59th independence anniversary. What are the plans of the federal government ahead of the big day? Well, we hear there was a briefing from the office of the president, uh, the secretary to the government of the federation by the permanent secretary in his office. Uh, activities will are to begin on Friday, the 27th of September. We hear with Jamaat Prayer and special lecture at the National Mosque in Abuja on Sunday, 29th of September and interdenominational Christian service at the National Christian Center in Abuja as well. Monday the 30th of September, the National Youth Entrepreneurship Empowerment Summit, the Independence Edition at the International Conference Center Abuja. There will also be a youth concert at the Millennium Park. While October 1st, the D-Day, the Independence Day media broadcasts by the President at 7 a.m. customary. There will also be a presidential change of guards and public lecture gala night at the State House. But as Nigerians get into the mood to mark this day, um, just like one's birthday, it's also a time to reflect on how far and how well we've actually fared. The presidential candidate of the Action Democratic Party, ADP, Alhaji Sani Abagi, joins us uh, to discuss the issue. We'd like to welcome you to the program. Tell us, what would you say defines us as a country as we clock 59 come October 1? Well, uh, well, I think I, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Nigerians and uh, also salute the foresight of our founding fathers that uh, laid the foundation for unity of this country and the economic progress of this country. If you look at what uh, the economy, because the economy is very, very important to anything we want to say about a, a nation, uh, the economy of this country, the GDP was about under $5 billion in 1960. And since that time, it went to all uh, high time. I mean, the whole, uh, it, it went as high as $586 billion in 2014. So the, the issue now is where are we you know, in, this, uh, in 2019? 2019, unfortunately, we have lost almost $200 billion US dollars of our economy, which means Nigeria has underperformed by uh, up to $200 billion, which is quite a lot. And Nigeria, like we know, we are a country that is blessed, you know, by, by, by way of size, by our location, by resources that we have, and by even human capital. So it's, uh, I think the, the, the country has also gone through the, the, our political history because there are three things that you must look at when you are assessing the uh, performance of a, of a country, which is how has the economy performed? Is the polity stable? Is the, is the judiciary uh, transparent? And these are three things that makes a country. And in our own particular case, I think we need to do quite a lot more. And I understand, I think because Mr. President understands the state of the nation, which is not uh, something to be, to be uh, which is not sharing yet, that's why I think on this second coming, he has put in place an economic team that we hope will be able to uh, add to what our founding fathers have done and what before this, before 20, 2014, we went high, uh, GDP, like I said, we've gone down. So I think we must do whatever it takes to catch up in, in, order, to, uh, in order to restore peace in this country and to be able to keep the unity that we have. Because if, if people are hungry, you will find things happening like uh, all these bandits, like all these uh, uh, armed robbery kidnapping, and, and uh, all sorts of restlessness, uh, restlessness that will be in the system. And that's what is happening. Then like also, we have, we've tested the two popular system of governance, which is the parliamentary system, and then now we are in the uh, presidential system of, of governance. Well, each one has its own ups and downs, uh, and, but today let's talk about what we have. In, in that, when we had parliamentary system, people are still nostalgic about it because a lot of things happened. Each zone was to have according to its ability, and you could see, you know, development coming, you know, at, at a pace in, in terms in, in a competitive manner. So people are nostalgic about it, but I want to say that the presidential system too, if operated in the manner it is intended to be operated by the constitution, I think we will have a better environment because you have unity. 
Mr. Yabagisari, I, I must ask you, I must ask you this question. I must ask you this question, if I may, and, and that is uh, your thoughts about the resounding call for restructuring, governance, and also um, constitutional restructuring. Do you think that this is something uh, that will come to pass? As I also ask you, um, your thoughts on the view that this past 28 years, now 29, has produced leaders who have uh, not improve the lives of the people. Uh, well, I could hear, but I understand you are talking about the academy and how it has impact the uh, life of the people, and then uh, the. Uh, no, the let me actually repeat the question. Uh, let me repeat the question. And the first is your uh, yeah. opinion of the resounding call for constitutional and governance reforms in the last couple of years, and your thoughts about uh, some people who think that the way things are in Nigeria is the fault of the past uh, governance that we've had in the past 28 years. Yes, I, I, I think uh, the constitutional reforms uh, that we, had, we have embarked upon, if carried to the logical conclusion, meaning that if the, the grassroots you know, aspect of our politics, for instance, if the, 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 that's the third tier of government, if it's allowed to perform, I mean to operate in an independent manner, such that the revenue and even the elections that take place there are allowed to take place in a way that Nigerians will accept the results of the elections, and they have the money, that's the revenue that's supposed to accrue to them so that they can begin to impact on the, on the citizens, I think uh, it will be a plus to, for, the, for the country to grow. But what we have today is that the reforms are not carried to the logical conclusion, especially in the, political, the, uh, the, the politics of the country. That's, but in the economic aspect too, people are talking about restructuring. I think the structuring, like I always say, is, is embedded, you know, it's uh, an inbuilt, there's an inbuilt mechanism in our constitution that allows the structure of the academy to take place without you having to hold national conferences or things like that. Because if you look at the constitution, you will find that there are uh, items that are on the exclusive legislative list of the constitution, there are items that are on concurrent list. So the National Assembly is, is expected to, as we go along, Take a look at each of the segments of the constitution and see which one do you move from one uh, one list to the other, so that you will now be you'll be able to have a dynamic, you know, uh, 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 economic performance of the of the of the country. That has not happened because still what you have in the legislative list, ex exclusive legislative list, is still there. Concurrent list, nothing has happened. So I think maybe this national assembly, with the experience they have gathered, because uh, I, I think the people we have at Hesa Affair, especially. The Senate President is somebody who has been there for quite, I mean, from the beginning of, uh, I can say, the, 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 the Third Republic and the Fourth and the, the Republic we are in now. So I think he has the experience, and he can probably uh, be able to uh, assuage, you know, the fears of those who are saying that the, as the corporate entity of Nigeria we have today cannot go on by tinkering with what we have in the concurrent list and then the legislative list, so that the the energy, that capacity, and that potential, which is now the opportunity for this country to grow and take its rightful place in the scheme of, in the, in the community of nations, will be unleashed because this country has a lot of potential, potential. and what is happening is that the government you have, in the, the system of the government has not allowed those energies and the opportunities to be uh, uh, so, so we have we have lots of lots so of optimism changes. from you, Alhaji Abagisani. We'd like to thank you um, for joining us on the program.